بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters, we are indeed fortunate to be seated in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this beautiful masjid, a beautiful place where we are gathered in order to obey Allah Almighty's instruction. I have one sincere request before I commence. Can we put our phones down, all of us, inshallah? It is the best advice that I can give you here in the house of Allah because we want to concentrate what is being said as for the live streams and everything else. You will see it later by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, you know this is the month of Ramadan. Is there any month that is more important than the month of Ramadan in the Islamic calendar? No, there isn't. Allah Almighty has given this month great importance. And it is the wisdom of Allah. As soon as the month enters, you feel immediately the rohaniyyah, the barakah, the blessings of the beautiful month of Ramadan. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam has immediately, has told us that we should immediately commence with ibadah and acts of worship. So as soon as it is announced, we start with something. What is it? It is the prayer. The prayer precedes the fast. We prayed tonight for tomorrow's fast. We prayed the first prayer before the first fast. And that is why the night of Eid, there is no taraweeh because that is the night of joy and happiness and goodness and grandeur. And it's the night of the gift of Allah Almighty upon us, subhanallah, those who have worked so hard during the month of Ramadan, they achieve their reward. And the day of Eid is a different farha. Farha meaning happiness, joy. لِلصَّائِمِ فَرْحَتَانِ فَرْحَةٌ عِنْدَ فِطْرِهِ وَفَرْحَةٌ عِنْدَ لِقَاءِ رَبِّهِ A one who fasts has two points of joy. The one is when he is opening his fast, when he breaks his fast. That's divided into two. On a daily basis, you open your fast. That is also very, very beneficial. MashaAllah, you have a moment of joy. When you put the tamra into your mouth, when you drink the sip of water, and you read the dua, inshallah, that itself is amazing. It gives you great joy. It's a moment of dua. It's a moment of spirituality. It's a moment of goodness. And each one of us looks forward to making the dua that he or she would like to achieve in his or her life, be it immediately or later. So it is amazing how Allah Almighty has blessed us with this beautiful moment at the time of iftar, where if we, where if we make a dua, we feel already that this dua is really granted to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you hear me at the back there now? No. We heard you say no, that means you heard us. <laughs> Is that better? MashaAllah. The point I was raising a little bit earlier was that Allah Almighty grants us two points of joy and happiness. As per the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, لِلصَّائِمِ فَرْحَتَانِ فَرْحَةٌ عِنْدَ فِطْرِهِ وَفَرْحَةٌ عِنْدَ لِقَاءِ رَبِّهِ The one who fasts has two points of joy. One is when he opens his fast and two is when he meets his Lord. Opening your fast is divided into two. On a daily basis as well as at the end of Ramadan when the month is over. 
Both of those moments are moments of joy. A believer feels them. Do you not feel happy when it's almost time for Adhan of Maghrib? Don't you feel excited? Don't you feel happy? Where did that happiness and joy come from? I promise you it came from Allah. I promise you it was given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you. That's why you feel it. For those of us at the back who didn't hear me say, I really request you to put your phones down because it's not only an irritation for the speaker, but even for the others. And this is the house of Allah. Let's try and concentrate what is being said. Ramadan is a month of dua. We make a lot of supplication to Allah, Allah Almighty. At the time of iftar, we make a supplication. Why? Because you engaged in a very big pillar of Islam. And at the end of the day, you are asking Allah, Oh Allah, help me, grant me, give me forgiveness, be happy with me, accept my fast, accept my tilawa of the Quran, accept my recitation of the Quran, as well as understanding, putting into practice, make me a better person. Don't make dua for yourself alone. Make dua for your family members, your children, your parents, your brothers, your sisters. The, the ummah and humanity at large for goodness, for guidance, for cure, for protection, for betterment of the condition of the people of the globe because we are living on the same globe. I cannot make dua for myself when I'm in a ship and that ship, we don't know which way it is heading. We make dua, oh Allah, grant us success. Protect the ship, protect the captain, protect everyone, subhanallah. So. This is Allah giving us a moment of dua. My brothers, my sisters, every time you engage in an act of worship or you do something good, seize an opportunity to make a good dua. Seize an opportunity to make a good dua. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. Oh our Lord, accept it from us. You are indeed all hearing, all knowing. Whenever you've done, a good deed. Similarly, when it comes to the end of Ramadan, towards the end, we're excited because the day of Eid is coming. Don't forget to make dua. Man sama Ramadana imanan wa ihtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbihi. Whoever fasts or stands in prayer in the month of Ramadan with iman, meaning with conviction, and ihtisab means with accountability, hoping and expecting a reward from Allah, Allah will forgive all their sins as they exit the month of Ramadan. So we enter the day of Eid clean, pure. Don't spoil it from that day. Let's live the beautiful teachings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now I want to spend a few moments telling you what we are taught by Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in terms of culture that is validated by Islam. In terms of culture that is validated by Islam, we have a beautiful culture. When we say an Islamic culture, we're talking of the highest values and the highest morals and the highest teachings of character and conduct and the beautiful way that we lead our lives. Do you know it is a duty for the young to respect the old and it is a duty for the old to have mercy upon the young. Do you know that that is a teaching of Islam? Today, when we are younger, we forget that age is something chosen by Allah. Why am I older than you? Or why are you older than me? Because Allah chose that to happen. It's a test. Am I going to give up my seat? For someone who is older than me, if I do that, I've understood the teaching of Islam. The culture that is validated by Islam, taught by Islam, the reward that you're going to get in order to make space for the elderly. When you are in public transport and you make space for women and the elderly, isn't that something worth commending? Isn't that a rewardable act? Let's revive this. Many of us over the years are becoming a little bit selfish. It's all about myself in Islam and in our beautiful culture. It's not all about yourself. It's about us. We are here. Get up for the elderly. Make them feel important. They have lived life beyond yours. They have seen more than you have. Respect the women, for example. 
at times you have someone breastfeeding or someone who might be expecting or someone who has just delivered or who has little children. Are you going to help them through? Are you going to make life easy for them? If so, you're a good Muslim to begin with before everything else. And if you forget to do that or you don't want to do it, you need help. That's why we are here today in a beautiful month of Ramadan reminding each other about what? About these beautiful teachings. Beautiful teachings. Do you know in Islam, what is the greeting? When I meet you, what do I say? Assalamu alaikum, mashallah, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May peace be upon you and the mercy of Allah and His blessings. Do you know that our Islamic tradition teaches us who should greet who first? Yusallimul marru ala al qaidi. Do you know what that means? If you are walking past and you see a group of people sitting or even one person sitting, it's the duty of those who are walking past to greet the one or those who are seated. Assalamu alaikum. Why am I greeting you with that greeting? Because I'm walking, you guys are sitting down. That is the beautiful teaching of Islam. My brothers, my sisters, did you know that if you are in a smaller number, you should greet those in a bigger number. al qalilu ala al kathir Did you know that when you are smaller in number, we are two guys walking and there's a group of 10 people. We should come and say, Assalamu alaikum. Nice, loud, clear, audible, and mean it from the bottom of your heart. What does it mean? It means peace be upon you. What is peace? Peace is the opposite of war, right? It means I guarantee you I won't harm you. If anything happens to you, we are in it together. We are going to protect each other here. That's what it means. You don't just half-heartedly say, Salam. Greet correctly. It's an act of worship. Assalamu alaikum. Tahiyya. That is a beautiful greeting. MashaAllah. It's a dua. You get a reward for it. 10, 20, 30 rewards. You add to it that which the Prophet sallallahu taught. What is it? Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Those are the three phrases of salam. The first being assalamu alaikum. That's the minimum. You want to increase a little bit more. Wa rahmatullahi. You want to increase a little bit more. Wa barakatuhu. The sunnah stops there. Some people add a lot of other additions and subtractions. If you are making a dua for someone, fair enough. It's not from the sunnah to add into the salam. The proper sunnah is assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. And Allah says, وَإِذَا حُيِّتُمْ بِتَحِيَّةٍ فَحَيُّوا بِأَحْسَنَ مِنْهَا أَوْ رُدُّوهَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ حَسِيبًا When you are greeted with a greeting, respond with a better greeting. Someone says, Assalamu alaikum. What do you say? I added it. And if, for example, the Quran says, if you are not going to give them a better greeting, at least give them equivalent to what they have said. You give them equivalent. What have you done? You have revived the Islamic teaching. You have lived a beautiful statement where you feel good. Look, everyone lives in a home. In your home, there are people, mostly your parents, your siblings, whoever else it may be, right? Next door, you have neighbors, Al-Jar. You know what the Prophet says? لا زال جبريل يوصيني بالجار حتى ظننت أنه يورثه. You know what that means? Jibreel alayhi salam kept coming to me and telling me about the importance of being good to your neighbors. So much so that I thought that one day he's going to come and say, when you die, you need to give him part of your inheritance. Just as well, it's not like that. Some of us are so miserly, we don't even want to give our own siblings their inheritance. Don't deceive people. Don't cheat people. Minimum is your neighbor. Be kind. Be kind to your neighbor. Be good. The Prophet ﷺ says, you are not a true believer if your neighbor is not protected from your harm. You're not a true believer. True believers, you need to look after your neighbor. Why? Because in my community, in my society, I want to live in harmony. I want to live in peace. I want to live in goodness. If my family is not in order, I won't be happy. If my neighbors are not happy, how will I be happy? Every day I'm entering, exiting. I don't know what's going to happen. That's not good. Have a good relationship with your neighbors. That is a duty 
that Allah has provided and that Allah has asked you to fulfill. Have a beautiful relationship with your neighbors, my brothers, my sisters. Similarly, as the circle grows, you have a community. You go to school. You go to a madrasa. You are in a community. You, you go to work, for example. You drive out, you drive in. Barakallah fikum. My brothers and sisters, you need to have a good relationship in your community. Otherwise, you won't be happy living in that society. Would you like to live in such a society where you're just not happy? No friends, no genuine people, no one around you cares for you. Everyone is all about themselves. Not at all. The Prophet Muhammad says, when you are cooking some stew, you can add a little bit of water and give some to the neighbors. Why? Where are these teachings? Where are they? Subhanallah. Now we have a new problem. What's the new problem? Maybe I'm a poor man. The man next door is very rich. If I were to give him a bowl of the soup I make, he might laugh at it and throw it in the bin. It can happen, right? He might say, I don't want to eat these guys. Who are they? The Prophet Muhammad says, none of you should belittle what is given to you, even if it is the hooves of an animal. The hooves of a sheep. You know what are the hooves? Generally, in India and Pakistan and some of those countries, they make a soup out of the trotters. What do they call it? Paya. Yes. Subhanallah, if you make the soup of that hoof and the Prophet says, don't make a belittlement of something that's given to you. No problem. If you wouldn't like to give something, and if you, sorry, if you wouldn't like to, for example, eat from something, don't belittle it. Take it, accept it with a, with a beautiful smile. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you so much. Following day, you send them something too. MashaAllah. And you might want to give it away, perhaps if you don't, if it is too spicy sometimes. Or maybe you, it might not suit your diet. No problem. But don't belittle it. The idea is give each other some good gifts once in a while. Show one another that you know what? You care for each other. This Hadiyah that we give. If you give it, the hearts become close. You don't have to give expensive things. You just give a few small things. We want to revive this beautiful Islamic culture that is there. And this is how we would make society a more beautiful place. People are struggling because in the communities, they don't even know each other. How many of you live in a building where you don't know the people living on your floor? Am I right or wrong? But you're a Muslim. And when you go and knock on them, say, look, I'm your neighbor. I just wanted to introduce myself. They'll give you a double look. Oh, are you sure? Because we've forgotten about this beautiful teaching. They should know you. You should introduce yourself in one way or another. Just to say, you know what? I am here. If there is anything you need, please let me know. When they park in your parking by mistake, there is a little day of Qiyamah that happens there. You know that? When they park in your parking by error or someone, that's the only time you got to know your neighbor. Because you know what? It's my parking. What? It's my parking. It, two minutes. It is my parking. Get the car out now. I'm not encouraging you to park in your neighbor's parking. But I am telling you that if it happens sometimes, deal with it in a good way. You're a Muslim. That is your neighbor. Those people live in your building. They share the same space as you. If that building were to come down, all of you lost something. You understand what I mean? You see how many people live in a 50 story building? Maybe a thousand more. If that building was no longer there, all thousand lost a space. That space is probably not so big on the ground, but it was going up. Therefore, protect the building together. Protect your space, your goodness, your sanity. You want a life. Life is very short. Before you know it, you will already be 20 years old, 30, 40. Before you know it, they start looking, you know, these old uncles. What do you mean uncle? Do I look like an uncle? Does it happen? You see the uncles and aunties. When do you become an uncle, by the way? At what age? 40. Okay, let's say 40. Okay. Although I don't agree because some people are born uncles. Mashallah. <laughs> But subhanallah, if you are an uncle at 40, many of us, we clock 40 and someone says, uncle, he said, do I look like your uncle? Because we want to con ourselves that we are young. You are no longer young. 
فلما بلغ أشده وبلغ أربعين سنة الله قلت إذ أشد it is the peak of your life 40 if you're going up a mountain down a mountain and you have 80 years at 40 you reach the top now you're going down so they begin to call you uncle and soon they will call you that old man <laughs> subhanallah before you know it it's okay life is too short be good be kind they will remember you for goodness how many people have passed on and we remember them for the good they stood for right or wrong they stood for a lot of goodness alhamdulillah ala dhalik my brothers my sisters islam teaches us the best of cultures and traditions the best of teachings the best of etiquettes wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was praised by allah where he was told you are upon the highest level of character conduct the teachings are amazing mashallah the teachings are amazing are you ready to follow that he helped everyone at home what is our teaching to help to assist do you help and assist or do you create all the work <laughs>